Hello friends, David here from Beyond the Kingdoms, and I'm checking in today with another Travel Tip Tuesday video. This week we are leaving Walt Disney World and headed to a very special attraction here in Central Florida, the Kennedy Space Center. 50 years ago today, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins launched into space aboard the Saturn V rocket to head to the moon. Several days later, on July 24, 1969, Neil and Buzz became the first two humans to ever walk on the surface of the moon. In honor of this important piece of American history, this week's videos will be completely dedicated to the Space Center. And today, I'm going to share with you my five top tips to know before heading out to this fantastic tourist attraction. So let's strap on in and get started. First of all, we have to talk about tickets. Like with any attraction here in Central Florida, there are several different tickets you can purchase to visit KSC. For most of you, a one-day ticket is probably what you're looking at, which is currently priced at $57 for adults. This is for any guest ages 12 and up, and it's at $47 for kids 3 to 11. My little ones under 3 years old are free. If you are very local and live in Brevard County, you can get a $5 discount, and both active military members and senior citizens get a $7 discount. If you're traveling from outside the Sunshine State and adding this to a week-long vacation with the theme parks in Florida, it's also worth checking if your travel agent has any packages to the parks as well as Kennedy Space Center. I know, for example, that my British friends who book through Virgin Holidays sometimes get this as part of a whole package deal. A one-day ticket to KSC includes all the major exhibits in the main visitor center, which of course includes things like the Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibit, the Astronaut Hall of Fame, and even the films shown at the IMAX theater. This one-day ticket will also include the basic KSC bus tour. This will take you from the main visitor center, around the various launch sites, and end at the Saturn V rocket building, which is where you'll find all of the exhibits focusing on the Apollo missions throughout the 1960s and 70s. There are add-on experiences like the astronaut training experience and other special interest bus tours. These are not included in that one-day ticket and are available for an additional fee. But I can tell you this, there are way more things to see and do here than you might think. In fact, if you're a real space nut, it could actually take a good two days to explore absolutely everything at the Space Center. Especially if you're doing these add-on experiences. But if you live a little bit more locally and have a real interest in space travel and the history of NASA, a multi-day ticket is actually a pretty good deal to consider. This allows you to visit an unlimited number of times for an entire year. You'll get access to the same exhibits as the one-day ticket, and this is priced lower than what two days will cost you. Currently, it's at $82 for adults and $67 for kids. If you think you would go at least two times in the span of a year, it's worth the price. But you'll also want to consider one of the annual passes. Kennedy Space Center has actually a few annual passes to choose from, and I won't really go into each and every one. But I do want to mention the Atlantis Pass, which is what I currently have myself. Just like that multi-day ticket, this allows you an unlimited number of entrances into KSC for a whole year. Both this annual pass and the multi-day ticket include a 10% discount for up to six accompanying guests. But the main difference with the annual pass is that it also comes with a 10% discount off of shopping and dining, as well as the astronaut training experience. And it has free parking for the whole year. For the record, the multi-day ticket doesn't come with any discounts on merchandise and food, and only gives you a one-time free parking voucher. The Atlantis Pass is priced at $96 for adults and $78 for kids. I've crunched the numbers myself for you, and even if you only visit two times in a year, the free parking and the food discount alone will make the Atlantis Pass more price effective than the multi-day ticket. Tip number two, transportation. This is one instance where you really will have to pre-plan how you will get there, especially if you're doing this along with the theme parks in Orlando. If you have a car or renting one, this is pretty simple. 
It's a straight shot east from Orlando to Kennedy Space Center. Just to remember that it can take you about an hour to drive there. So check opening times and make sure you leave with plenty of time. KSC definitely doesn't see the same number of visitors as the theme parks, but with all there is to see and do, I would give yourself a good solid full day to experience this, along with getting there and back again. The Space Center is also very close to Cocoa Beach if you're staying in that area, and naturally it's close to the port at Cape Canaveral. So if you're going on a cruise out of there, this could be an extra attraction to do either before or after your vacation. In fact, the Disney Cruise Line offers a port adventure or shore excursion to the Kennedy Space Center on their ships. Now, if you don't have a car, it will be very wise to pre-book some sort of transportation. The best thing to do is to check online reservation sites such as TripAdvisor and Viator to book a one-day admission ticket that includes transportation from Orlando. If you don't need the transportation link, it's cheaper to buy tickets directly from the Space Center. I would only consider these third-party sites if you need that transport link. Tip number three, your itinerary and order of experiences. Yes, I know this isn't Disney World and it's not like you have to hardcore plan things and reserve fast passes here. However, there is one key element about KSC that can make your day a little bit tricky. Like I said, all the major exhibits are located in the main visitor center. However, the basic bus tour that takes you to the launch sites ends at the Apollo Saturn V rocket building, which is about seven miles away from the visitor complex. This bus tour is a really good chance to see things up close, but it can take at least two hours to experience. So when you choose to actually do this experience along with the other exhibits, you have to plan accordingly. My advice is to arrive right when the complex opens, which is usually at 9 a.m. Arrive at opening time and go to the bus tour first. The wait time will be very short, and this is a great way to start your day. And then you can enjoy the rest of your day in the main visitor complex. I have done this myself in the reverse order, and I really didn't enjoy it as much. The last bus tour will usually depart from the main complex three and a half hours before closing time. On a recent trip, when I ended my day doing this, I felt very rushed to do everything at the visitor center first and felt really rushed at the main Apollo building. I also noticed that around midday at 1 p.m., the wait time for the bus tour was about 45 minutes long. Waiting in line on top of how long this tour actually takes will really eat into your day. So start with the bus tour, come back to the main complex, have lunch, maybe see an IMAX movie, and end your day at the Shuttle Atlantis Experience. It's a fantastic finale to the whole day. Tip number four is to check what astronauts are appearing on the day of your visit. Nearly every day at the Space Center, you can meet a real-life astronaut, ask some of your burning questions, and even get a photo with them. There are three ways to meet an astronaut here. They usually appear in a free presentation at the Universe Theater. You can also dine with an astronaut for an additional cost. Or you can meet them at the space shop at the end of the day and get an autograph. The reason I say to check ahead on who's visiting is for you hardcore space fans who want a specific autograph. For example, you can read a bio of who's visiting and what missions they were a part of. So if you want an autograph to go with a picture of your favorite space shuttle, you can match it up with someone who actually took part in a mission. To check who is visiting, go to the KSC's main website. Click on launches and events found on the menu tab on the left side of the screen and then click on Event Calendar. This will tell you exactly who's visiting on any given day and what other events are taking place. Which takes me to my final tip, watching an actual space launch. For some people, getting to witness a real rocket blast off into space is a once in a lifetime experience. The events tab in the menu that I just mentioned will tell you when launches will actually take place. And this is a great time to do some research because NASA recently announced its plans to return to the moon by 2024.
But before men and women get to walk on the surface of the moon again, several launches will take place before that to prep for the major milestone. And the entire reason we are going back to the moon is to build Gateway, an orbiting space station that will eventually launch us further into deep space. Like when we finally get to travel to Mars. Now here are some things to know if you want to plan a visit to KSC paired with a viewing of a rocket launch. First of all, you'll have to be very flexible. It is not uncommon for a launch to get scrubbed or pushed back for a multitude of reasons. As you can imagine, this is an extremely complex operation here. So I think it's wise to have plans that you can cancel and change up to the last minute. If you have a ticket to one of the viewing areas and a launch is postponed before you board a bus to get out there, the ticket will be valid at a later time when there's a second attempt to move forward with the mission. I will leave a link in the description below for KSC's full breakdown on how they deal with postponed launches. Secondly, it's good to know that there are several places to view a launch and obviously they come at different price points. There are three different viewing locations depending on which pad a rocket is launched from. The best view is the LC-39 observation area. This is the closest view visitors can get from an actual launch, about two to five miles away from the pad. This includes some shaded seating, snacks and refreshments, and is wheelchair accessible. A ticket to this viewing area is priced at $49. Next, there is the Banana Creek viewing area. This is a little bit further back at around five to eight miles from the launch pads and located right next to the Apollo Saturn V rocket building. This means that you can easily tie in a visit to the exhibits in this area as well. This viewing area is also wheelchair accessible and priced at just $20 per person. But the important thing to know here is that both of these viewing areas require an admission ticket to the Kennedy Space Center as well. So that premium viewing area will cost you $49 on top of your entrance ticket. However, there is a third option that doesn't include any additional cost and that is to view a launch from the main visitor complex near the Space Shuttle Atlantis building. Now, I have to admit to you that you really won't see the initial engines blasting at the start of the launch. But once it gets going into the air, you'll definitely see a trail of smoke and a huge rocket heading out into space. This one is best for a casual visitor who just happens to be visiting on the same day as a launch. Of course, also keep in mind that a launch day will bring in way more people to the visitor complex, so allow extra time to get to and from places. So there you have it, friends, my five top tips to know when visiting the Kennedy Space Center. I'm a big nerd when it comes to NASA and space travel, and I think KSC is a very underrated place to visit. I don't think there's anything else in Florida that has such important ties to a major milestone in American history. It is truly a special place. Stay tuned later this week as I share my Foodie Friday video, which this time will be a full review of the Dine with an Astronaut experience. And of course, we have the Sunday Main Show, where I will provide a complete guide and tour exploring the Kennedy Space Center. But until next time, thank you so much for watching, and remember, if you can dream it, you can do it.